What have you had to survive like Laura Croft in real life? Climbing vertical cliffs, jumping across deadly traps, exploring ancient tombs filled with puzzles and poison darts. Could your body actually handle that? Today, we're separating video game fantasy from real world biology, physics, and survival. And we're gonna find out just how close Tomb Raider really is to reality, or how far it totally goes off the rails. Leave your like, subscribe, and let's dive in. Before we tear apart her survival chances, let's rewind a bit. Who is Laura Croft? She's not just any video game character. She's the action-adventure icon. First appearing in 1996, Laura Croft was introduced to the world as a fearless British archaeologist. Basically, a badass female Indiana Jones with twin pistols and zero fear. But over the years, Laura evolved a lot. In the original games, she was larger than life, literally. Polygonal graphics gave her a now infamous silhouette, but fans didn't just stick around for her looks. It was the adventure. Ancient temples, crushed artifacts, solving puzzles while dodging panthers. Tomb Raider felt like playing through your own 90s action movie. But in 2013, things got real. The Tomb Raider reboot took Laura back to her origins, not as a superhero, but as a scared, untested young woman stranded on a hostile island. She wasn't born fearless, she became it. This Laura bled, she broke bones, she cried, she made mistakes, and players felt every second of it. From escaping cultists on Yamatai to surviving the snowy wilderness of Siberia in Rise of the Tomb Raider, this new version made Laura more human and way more relatable. But even as the games got grittier, one thing never changed, Laura's obsession with discovery. Whether it's hunting down the lost city of Kitesh, exploring Peruvian jungle ruins, or challenging the myth of immortality, she's always chasing some deeper truth buried beneath the surface. She's not just looking for treasure, she's trying to understand the world, her place in it, and the legacy her father left behind. By Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see a Laura who's become confident, skilled, and yes, still kind of reckless. She fights paramilitary groups, triggers apocalypses, and uncovers ancient secrets most historians would only dream of. But she also struggles with guilt, identity, and the consequences of her actions. She's not invincible, even if the gameplay kind of makes her seem like it. That tension between vulnerable human and unstoppable action hero is what makes her story so compelling. So now that we know who she is, a globe-trotting, multilingual, puzzle-solving, cliff-jumping archaeologist with a PhD in danger, the question is, could you actually survive doing what she does? Let's get into the science behind Laura's wildest stunts and see if the human body could actually keep up. Okay, first up, climbing. In the Tomb Raider games, especially the reboot trilogy, Laura climbs constantly. She scales rock walls with just a pickaxe and sheer willpower. No ropes, no belays, just vibes. But in real life, climbing isn't about bravery. It's about strength, stamina, and insane training. Like years of training. Professional climbers burn up to 900 calories per hour on a moderate climb. That's more than running a marathon, and they still need brakes, water, and both hands intact. Now picture Laura. She climbs for hours, pulls her full body weight with one arm, jumps between ledges, and never slips. Her hands never bleed, her grip never fails. It's like her fingers are made of titanium. Real climbers deal with shredded calluses, torn tendons, and cramps that'll make you fall in seconds. One wrong move, and you're done. No checkpoints, no quick respawns. And that's just the muscles. When you're physically exhausted, your balance, coordination, and decision-making all tank fast. Laura, she fights, 
climbs, puzzles, and outruns collapsing temples, all without rest. In real life, she would have passed out halfway through the first tomb in Tomb Raider. And let's not forget the weather. Ever tried holding on to a wet rock in freezing rain? Your muscles stiffen, fingers go numb, reflexes slow, and Laura, she's scaling glaciers in Siberia without gloves, like it's a CrossFit session. But the wildest part? The falls. In the game, Laura falls a lot. From cliffs, buildings, trap doors, sometimes 15, 20 meters straight down. And then she just brushes it off and keeps going. Here's some reality. A three meter fall can break bones. A 10 meter drop could be fatal. And she's falling onto rocks, not crash pads. To put it in perspective, jumping from 20 meters into water, just water, is like hitting concrete if your posture's wrong. That's over 70 kilometers per hour of impact. Trained divers practice for years to survive that. Laura just takes it like a boss. And she doesn't just fall. She runs, climbs, swims, shoots, and brawls for hours on end. No sleep, no meals, not even a granola bar. Even elite Olympic athletes couldn't survive the physical output of one Tomb Raider level. But the real danger isn't just physical, it's where Laura goes. Let's talk tombs. In the game, tombs are full of epic puzzles, collapsing floors, and spikes flying out of walls. Basically, a cross between Indiana Jones and a Final Destination movie. But in real life, ancient ruins are a whole different kind of deadly. First off, they're unstable. We're talking centuries, even millennia, of erosion. Stones crumble, ceilings collapse. In actual archaeology, Teams use metal supports, scaffolding, even motion sensors to detect shifts in pressure before entering. Laura? She sprints in like she's on a timer. Realistically, that kind of pressure would literally cause a cave-in. And what about the air? Tombs sealed for centuries often have low oxygen levels. Or worse, toxic gases like methane or mold spores. That's why real archaeologists use gas detectors and oxygen masks. Laura, she just breathes it all in and starts lighting torches. Then there's the survival gear. Water, light, maps, medical kit, basic stuff. But Laura, especially in the early games, doesn't even carry a backpack. In real life expeditions, teams go in with checklists, backup supplies, and emergency plans. Without water, you're in serious trouble after 48 hours. No light, you'll lose orientation make fatal errors, and probably trip into a bottomless pit. Oh, and the whole grab the artifact and run thing? Yeah, archaeologists hate that. Real archaeology isn't about treasure hunting. It's about careful documentation, cataloging, respect for the site. Laura's smash and grab style? More looter than scholar. And don't even think about going alone. In real life expeditions, you've got engineers, historians, doctors, security. It's a full team effort. One collapse, one snake bite, one sprained ankle, and if you're solo, you're dead. To give you context, when Howard Carter discovered Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the team took weeks just to safely enter. They weren't dodging traps, they were avoiding accidents. There's no background music, no cinematic cutscenes, just patience, planning, and a lot of paperwork. But let's say, somehow, you survive the trip inside. There's still the biggest challenge ahead, the puzzles. In the games, Laura is basically a puzzle-solving prodigy. She deciphers ancient languages, rotates massive gear systems, solves thousand-year-old mechanisms while the building's collapsing. It's awesome, but in the real world, it's basically impossible. Studies show that just 2% dehydration can mess with your short-term memory. Add physical exhaustion, stress, fear, hunger, and your brain 
turns to soup. But Laura? She solves cryptic riddles while being chased by mercenaries and dodging fireballs, all in a tank top. Real archaeologists don't solve puzzles on the fly. They study the site for weeks. Sometimes they don't even know what they're looking at until years later. Symbols that Laura deciphers in seconds might take actual experts days or weeks to translate. And real traps might require an engineer to even understand how they work. And under pressure, your ability to think drops drastically. In survival situations, humans are known to forget basic things, like how to work a flashlight or even which direction they came from. Laura operates like she's in a calm office, not a collapsing death maze. Even if you had her IQ, you'd still need help. Mental fatigue is real. Archaeology teams take turns, double-check work, and consult each other because one wrong move could be fatal. The truth is, Tomb Raider puzzles are amazing, but they only work because the game world is frozen in time. No food, no fatigue, no actual pressure. Just you, the puzzle, and the soundtrack. Let's talk about Laura's jumps. She leaps across chasms like it's nothing. One solid step, and boom! Eight meters across, perfect landing, no problem. But in real life, that's high-level Olympic stuff. The world record for long jump is about 8.95 meters, set under perfect conditions, flat surface, dry weather, and a runway. Laura's doing that from crumbling platforms, in the rain, with explosions in the background. Not to mention landing. Jumping is only half the move. Landing safely requires technique. Trained athletes learn how to roll, absorb shock, and minimize injury. Laura lands on a hard stone, sand, and occasionally spikes, and keeps going. One bad landing. You're looking at torn ligaments, fractured ankles, even spinal injury. And she does this dozens of times per mission. Then there are the swings. You know those rope or vine swings she loves? In real life, you'd need a secure anchor, strong material, and the right angle to not slam into the water or just fall. Grabbing ledges mid-air requires a grip strength one and a half times your body weight. Most people, even trained athletes, would dislocate a shoulder trying that. And all those surfaces, super slippery. Real climbers use specialized boots, carabiners, chalk, and extreme caution. Laura just wears regular sneakers and hopes for the best. But you know what's funny? Even with all this wild physics, that's what makes the game fun. The mechanics are just realistic enough to feel possible, but exaggerated enough to make you feel like a superhero. That's the Tomb Raider magic. At the end of the day, Laura Croft is a fantasy but it's rooted in reality. Real archaeology is slow, careful, full of safety checks, documentation, and teamwork. You won't find many dual-wielding adventures sprinting through ruins, but that doesn't make Laura any less important. She inspired a generation to care about ancient history, forgotten civilizations, and even science. Her journey might be Hollywood, not National Geographic, but the impact 100% real. So, let us know, what part of Laura's insane routine surprised you the most? Would you rather explore ruins with patience or go full-on action hero? Drop your answer in the comments and tell us your favorite Tomb Raider moment of all time. If you had fun watching, smash that archaeological like, subscribe for more pop culture science, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next adventure. Until then, stay curious and Watch out for traps.